Today we're going to talk about endocrine disorders. The endocrine system contains all the hormones and all the things the hormones regulate. Some of these hormones regulate things that when they go wrong can be really interesting. And so those are some of the ones we're going to examine today. First of all, one of the major hormones in the human body controls growth. It is the growth hormone and it is found in the pituitary gland. Growth hormone is secreted by the pituitary gland when you are a child and it helps make you taller until you hit puberty and then post puberty you typically stop growing. That is unless you are the gentleman on the right Robert Pershing Waldo who grew to be a height of almost nine feet tall because his pituitary gland produced too much growth hormone when he was younger and throughout his life which did not last very long as he died in 1940 at age 22. You might think that the problem was his cardiovascular system or some other aspect of his height, but in reality, the issues were mainly in his nervous system. When your legs are that long, and growth hormone specifically makes long bones longer, thus his legs being extremely long, it is difficult to send the nerve signals down through the legs to the toes so Robert Pershing Waldo could not feel his feet very well and needed to have braces on his legs to walk. One of those braces cut into his legs at one point and since he also could not feel due to the nerves being too long, he got sepsis and died from essentially the cut in his legs from the braces. That would be gigantism. You can have too much growth hormone post puberty, but it doesn't make your long bones longer, so it doesn't make you much taller. However, growth hormone does affect other aspects of the body. Andre the Giant on the left, best known for wrestling and the Princess Bride, is an example of a person with agromegaly. He is somewhat taller than average, but mostly you see the condition portrayed in the shape and size of his facial, face and facial features, as well as his hands and feet. Hands and feet have an overgrowth of skin on the inside, making them bulky. The face ends up with that very particular oval shape, as well as a larger sort of chin and cheeks as the growth hormone affects those areas. The reverse, of course, of having too growth hormones, having too little. A pituitary dwarf, such as on the right side, is someone whose pituitary gland simply does not produce enough growth hormone over the entire course of their life. So she has ended up significantly small, but fairly well proportioned. And so that is a pituitary dwarf. However, in some cases, for example, achondroplastic dwarfs caused by achondroplasia, the condition is actually a lack of growth hormone receptors on the long bones. So growth hormone again makes bones longer. In this case, the achondroplastic dwarfs don't have the receptors. So they end up with normal sized torsos as the growth hormone works well everywhere else, but much smaller arms, legs, hands, and feet. Examples of this are Peter Dinklage and Wee Man. Another hormone that has some interesting effects can be the thyroid. The thyroid is found just in the neck and the thyroid works on a number of different factors of the body. One of the big ones is metabolism, which ends up being an overall activity of muscle, as well as activity of glands and other parts of the body. Too much thyroid hormone, known as hyperthyroidism, which can be caused by Graves' disease, causes an interesting feature where the eyes are pushed against by the pressure behind them and appear like they are going to pop out of the head. Nowadays, you don't see this very often because people with hyperthyroidism are given appropriate drugs to lower the amounts of the hormone, and someone like Missy Elliott, who has Graves' disease, does not have this eye feature that people had in the older days. On the reverse side, too little thyroid hormone causes a number of different conditions, including issues with weight loss and other metabolism. But also, you need iodine to create thyroid hormone. When the thyroid does not have enough iodine, it begins the process of creating thyroid hormone and then has no way to finish it. So it just creates a storage of unfinished high thyroid hormone. And specifically, it causes what is called a goiter or a swelling of the thyroid in the throat. 
This is more common in third world countries where not enough iodine is a more consistent problem. In the US, iodine is found in salt, iodized salt, and many people don't have a problem getting enough iodine. Cortisol is an extremely important hormone produced by the adrenal glands, which are just above the kidneys. And cortisol is produced in response to stress. It has a number of different functions, one of which is to make you alert. And so it goes up and down over the course of a day. So it is higher a little bit earlier in the morning and then dips in the afternoons, which is why you get an after lunch slump. However, it was also made to work directly with long-term or chronic stress conditions. Now, in early humans, Paleolithic type humans, long-term stress conditions meant really one of two things. You were either starving, that's long-term stress, or you were cold, that's also long-term stress. And the combination of those two things tended to mean that cortisol did what was most useful to someone who is cold and starving, and that is to store fat. So the cortisol would store fat, especially around the mid-region. In the case of Cushing syndrome, where the adrenals produce too much cortisol overall, people store fat throughout their body in a manner in which they are unable to control. So the picture on the right side shows a pair of twins in which the boy does not have Cushing syndrome and the girl does. And you can see the extended fat collection in her face and throughout her body. Although cortisol stores fat, and that's not always something that you want, especially since today's modern stresses are not nearly the same as starving, you do need cortisol to function and to stay awake, and Addison's disease can be a lack of cortisol production. It messes with other functions of the body, and in the case shown here on the left, you can see a partial depigmentation of the fingers that is a symptom of Addison's disease. The last major hormone I want to talk about is probably the one that affects the most people in the United States today, and that is insulin. Insulin is an important hormone. It comes from the pancreas, and when blood sugar is too high, which is what happens after you eat, insulin is released and tells the cells to take up blood sugar so it can be used as energy. Interestingly enough, in reverse, if your blood sugar drops too low because you have not eaten in a while, the pancreas releases a hormone called glucagon, whose job it is is to tell the liver to release sugar so that you have some for energy. That process usually works just fine. But if you are consistently over bombarding the body with sugar, it will then also become over bombarded with insulin in response to the sugar. And it can get high enough that the cells stop recognizing the insulin and no longer take up the sugar. What this means is you eat, there's sugar in your bloodstream, insulin is produced, but the cells ignore it, leaving the sugar in your bloodstream, but giving you no energy for your cells to actually use. This can cause a cyclical problem of insulin resistance and hypoglycemia, where a person on the opening stages of insulin resistance, when it's just beginning, will take in a meal with a significant amount of sugar. Their blood sugar will go up, their insulin level will go up, but the cells are ignoring it. So the body produces more insulin in response to the higher blood sugar. Eventually the body catches up and there's enough insulin that the sugar levels drop and they drop dramatically, causing a hypoglycemic reaction, which is essentially an emergency state of starvation and the body responds as if it is an emergency. And this can be problematic and the overproduction of insulin over time causes toxicity. One of the things that it does is it causes fats to be processed in a completely different manner. When there's increased glucose and increased insulin, fats from the diet, which could be stored as energy, are processed as low density lipoproteins or LDL cholesterol. You might recognize that as the bad cholesterol versus high density lipoproteins, which is a good efficient storage of fat. Those fats are often turned into triglycerides as well. And so both triglycerides and low density lipoproteins, LDL, are indications of increased blood sugar and also increased insulin in the bloodstream. 
So although we don't always see fasting blood glucose numbers in people with insulin resistance, we very often see increased cholesterol numbers. And if your triglycerides are high, you should probably get tested for insulin resistance. Finally, related to that is hypoglycemia, typically reactive hypoglycemia, where people's bodies overproduce insulin every time they eat any kind of carbohydrate or sugar. What happens is you eat the sugar, insulin is overproduced, and it causes a crash two to four hours after the meal. This is again a state of emergency starvation and your body acts like it is an emergency and releases all the same hormones and chemicals as a fight or flight reaction, causing anxiety, shaking, nervousness, and different kinds of issues with your judgment and ability to function. For both insulin resistance and reactive hypoglycemia, the suggestion is actually to significantly lower the carb intake. If you don't have sugar in your bloodstream, you don't produce insulin, and then the negative effects cannot take place. And hopefully the body will become more receptive to insulin in the future, and less of it will do the job that it was doing in this case. This is one of the biggest issues in the United States today with metabolic syndrome and increased insulin resistance. And I hate to tell you this, but when we say the steak and potato is what's going to cause the heart attack, it's the potato, not the steak. Thanks for listening to my information about some endocrine disorders and hormones. Have a good day.